Yup, let's get original crew, man. We're back. We have worst things Dan Schneider has done. Unfortunately, we haven't watched the uh the documentary. And you know what? I don't know if I really want to watch it, watch it on the real. Because it's just weird. Like, I didn't, we didn't got a lot of, like, info that has came out from it. Like, just the, some certain details. Yeah. Um, but just even like with the stuff that you've heard, it's, like, very, very disturbing. And even just the after effects of the certain people who's willing to still support. Yeah. And it's just, like, it'd be, it's low-key embarrassing and low-key... How you thought Hollywood is was actually is really actually how you thought Hollywood was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That if you want this role, you gonna have to. You know what I'm saying? They ain't always. You got to think about it. They've been making those type of jokes and those type of comments. There's a reason why they've been saying this type of stuff. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? And if we can see right here, Amanda Bonds, she's just been trying to focus on. And I hate it for her, bro. Yeah. You got to think about it, who she was becoming, like the stardom. She, you just know some stuff that took place while she was there. The after face in the head on her, her. Yep. You no know, telling what what and then pushed her to and who them she and then pushed her to be around. Mm -hmm. This probably was never good. really good for her. So, hey man, with that being said, before we get into it. Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Lock it in with a thumbs up. But let's go, man. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about you. Ready? I'm ready. All right. It is also bittersweet to watch knowing what the women were dealing with behind the scenes. He became a worse and worse person to work for. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the worst things Dan Schneider has been accused of by his colleagues, former employees, and others in the industry. It was probably the wrongest thing I've ever seen happen to a woman in a professional environment ever. His reaction to Raquel Lee Ballou's birthday cake. Raquel Lee Ballou was a regular on the first season of The Amanda Show, although she felt more like a guest star and would soon be phased out altogether. While Ballou enjoyed working with co-stars like Drake Bell, she's just one of the individuals who have called out Schneider for creating a toxic work environment, describing him as a, quote, tornado. Dan was like a tornado. He'd come in and like, phew, you'd be like, wow, okay, <laughs> what just happened? Dan showed up. The set would not feel the same when, when he would leave because, you know, I think everybody was on their toes, scared. Schneider's yelling had everyone on their toes, but Baloo felt singled out when the crew got her a cake for her 13th birthday. What started as a joyous celebration quickly turned sour when Schneider caught wind of the cake, complaining about its size. Dan's really upset. Like, why did you get her that cake? Like, that's a big cake. Like, she didn't need that big of a cake. And I was just like, and I really, I felt it. Schneider did not make Baloo feel welcome on set a sentiment that was emphasized when she wasn't invited back without explanation. I had to really like pick myself back up and keep it moving in an industry that showed me very early on that it has no love for me at all. Overworking employees, even with child- That's crazy, cause I do remember her, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, like, definitely. as a kid, we never pay attention to people phasing out and phasing, but this was their livelihood. Yeah. Even though they were, they were kids too, it was like, but this is also how they make a living. This is also true, true. how they are able to advance in their careers and stuff. They have to work. Yeah. And being phased out like that is not a good look. Or even if she you was noticed, good on the show, she was. She definitely was. So that's what's kind of it's weird to me. You know, like yeah. what was the reason? You know. Yeah, yeah, what was the reason? Right. Because it, it doesn't make sense to me. But I think, like, growing up, like, you notice that people are no longer there, but you don't, like, like make it such a big deal because you, you you're you not thinking, like, oh, like, okay, maybe it's just part of business or maybe it's this or maybe you're not thinking like that. You're just like, oh, okay, well, they replaced this person or this person hasn't come back or whatever the case may be, but you don't really, like, think deep. Of, and it, like, it's stuff going on in the background. And it makes you also think because... Like, 
who else has it been done to that was able to get that big name that never came out and spoke out? You get what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of people who was able to grow. Willing among, to do things. No, that... not, not necessarily willing. Not willing. Okay. Those who uh, was able to, what I mean was they started off as, uh, let's just say all that or other different types of shows. And then they branched off, was able to have their own syndicated shows and was able to go and do maybe movies or do other things okay. and, and those type of ranks. I'm saying, and they never came out and said anything. Like, Talking about like the, the teenagers. The yeah, kids. the actors. Well, I was just talking about, I was speaking more in general, not just like the like I, kids. I was because, talking about people in Hollywood. But yeah, most definitely. Yeah, that's what I'm most, talking about. I wasn't talking about just, oh, I'm just them. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about this. people. Yeah, but yeah, most definitely labor laws in place. Numerous stars who grew up working on Nickelodeon shows have reflected on the long hours. They would be like, hey, can you stay an extra however long? I guess, sure. And you kind of look at your mom like, we're ignoring child labor laws again. Do you know? All right. It wasn't just the young stars who had to work late. According to Karen Finley Thompson, an editor on several Nickelodeon productions, her life revolved around the Schneider. You had to be as good or better or put more hours in or do longer things than Dan did. And we all did it. Getting fired was the alternative if you weren't willing to comply with his demanding schedule, mm. which could last from 8 a.m. to Hollywood. midnight. There wasn't even time for a meal or bathroom break, according to Thompson, who had to be taken to the hospital at one point. And mm. as I'm leaving and curled over, I could hear someone say, how is the show going to get finished? Wow. And I just remember saying, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. Although Thompson regularly put work before her health, Schneider didn't make good on his promise to give her another job, favoring a man with fewer credentials. Posting photos of underage actors' feet. Watching various days. I wonder how Dan was able to move up in the ranks like he did. Like, Cause I, I, a lot of times I do wonder about that, like with those who, Possibly in Hollywood, that's not like real big or acted previously. Previously, before I'm like, did you get into it financially? Like, what? Well, especially for you to start doing that, those things to other people. Typically, victims do create other victims in a lot of cases. So, I wonder was he somebody who was a victim of things went on in Hollywood, and in return, after experiencing and seeing things and having things done either to himself or other. Just, I'm not saying that's what happened to him. I'm just saying I wonder if that's something that has happened to him. You get what I mean? Because especially in Hollywood, a lot of times people end up, you find out, oh, this person, they were touched when they were a kid, especially those who grew up as a child or had to do certain favors, and then they end up abusing those, also those that come after that. I guess, would you... I mean, I can't say because I don't know, but I get what you're I'm saying. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm you, not I saying that's, what, that's saying. what happened. But yeah, yeah, or you just have some people that are just sick people. Like, well, I wonder how they he rise to the rank so fast. Like, yeah, I get what, you. And, and, and have question. that much power. That's a good question. Schneider Productions, fans have noticed an unusual fixation on feet. Schneider mm. might not be the only creative figure with a foot fascination, but a few things separate him from Quentin Tarantino. What's that American expression? If the shoe fits, you must wear it. For starters, the feet highlighted in Schneider's work often belonged to underage actors. Secondly, it wasn't just in his shows. Zoe 101 star Alexa Nicholas recalls Schneider taking photos of cast members' feet, some of which he posted on social media. We, well, he was walking around with dollar bills. That's what I remember. And he was telling the kids, you know, come, I'll take photos of your feet and, and, and give you a dollar. Like, it was like some funny, like, hoax, like, thing and I remember my mom going no. Schneider found it quote ridiculous when he was accused of having a foot fetish saying quote kids find feet goofy and funny and there was no effort to sexualize his young stars. Whatever Schneider's intent was Nicholas's mother could tell this was unprofessional forbidding her daughter from having her feet photographed. It was something that a child wouldn't necessarily pick up on. Right, you would have to be an adult to, to understand that. Yeah. So it was like, oh, feet. You know, if he was going around asking for something else, we'd all go, whoa. Yeah. And you're fired. Asking female co-workers for massages. There was always someone massaging him. That's like all I remember was some person on set 
massaging that guy. Schneider has been repeatedly called out for sexism, requesting massages from women on set being one example. Amanda Bynes is the most high-profile person reportedly seen giving Schneider neck massages. Bynes has yet to comment on the massages and other allegations against Schneider. However, multiple female staffers have opened up about being pressured to massage their boss. She got a text from him saying, come and massage me on the set. And she said, my God, doesn't he know I'm doing two shows? I'm so busy. And I could see that she was distraught, but she went anyway. According to writer Jenny Kilgan, Schneider once offered to include one of her sketches on a show in exchange for a massage. While Schneider framed the proposition as a joke, Kilgan felt uncomfortable, but feared the consequences if she said no. Schneider has since expressed regret about the massages, among other things, although many have found his apologies to be too little, too late. And I have to say this, where Amanda, I don't think she, right at, in, at this moment, I don't think she would come out. Because uh, I just think in her mind, she's she because I've seen her post uh, on Twitter either yesterday or today. Yeah. I can't remember. She she still focuses on what yeah, she got. Seen it. So I don't think she's necessarily in a headspace to even want to address any of this. Yeah. Or is it too scarring for her to even want to relive I, yeah, I those really thoughts? Think I think she's trying she's, to like put that. It's like she's trying to run away from it. whatever happened. If anything did happen, it's kind of like she's trying to touch those memories and, and kind of and like forget about it. Yeah. And uh, is that always healing for for one? I, I don't think so. Because I think sometimes you, you also need to voice and address it. Because it's running kind of running away from, from it doesn't resolve it. What happened. You you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but with that, like I always say, everyone deals with things differently. Yeah, and true. <sighs> I would hope I would hope one day she addresses it. Also, others address things as well, because you can't let someone go out here and try to dumb it like nothing really happened or it yeah. wasn't what it was. Yeah, true. Like I, yeah. because even his his addressing the situation, I'll say, with doing that interview, very so passive. Like oh, it wasn't what it what you, what it wasn't what they what people are making it. To and me. then it I apologize as, for you know, for the actions that they went through with the other people, uh, but me I didn't do it. But not taking accountability and and saying what it is. Yeah, because just what because really you was. wasn't convicted of anything doesn't make make you innocent. True. You know what I'm saying? Because the others were convicted. The other people who's been involved or speculated on has been convicted of of things. He's just the one that hasn't been convicted. And I just think right now they just don't have strong enough evidence. Yeah. And so it's, it's going to take that one person that has to, and then a lot of other evidence come out. Dan was asking for this incredibly inappropriate thing for almost two decades. He was asking people at work to touch him. Allegations of racism. I understood the magnitude of being the token black girl, but I didn't realize how significant that was until years later. All that started with an almost half black cast. As Schneider ascended the Nickelodeon ladder though, most of his shows seemed to spotlight white actors. That's not to say there were no people of color, but performers like Raquel Lee Ballou and Giovanni Samuels sensed they were being tokenized. Some roles were also accused of perpetuating stereotypes, such as when Brian Hearn played a cookie dealer. And I was like, Oh, the black kid gets to beat? Schneider has said that diversity is, quote, very important to him, taking pride in shows like Keenan and Kel. While Keenan Thompson didn't recall any negative experiences with Schneider, he doesn't remember him being on set that often, noting that Keenan and Kel had a different showrunner. Some got the impression that Schneider favored white performers, with black cast members getting some. But with that, I also think Keenan did come out and say, like, they were a part of the, like, the original, the yeah. first, even like uh, Nick Cannon. Yeah, he was part of one of the first original, like all that members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they had a lot of diversity, because even Hispanic, if you notice, yeah, yeah. you won't even see that. Like no. once Dan kind of took the helm of certain things, a lot it was of things, more pushed to. A lot of people to, and yeah, because I wonder was faded out. I wonder was he around for Nasdaq? Uh, Nasdaq classified school survivor guy. Mm -hmm. Cause you remember Cookie, 
kick. You remember her? Because the, the old girl said her and Ned said they used to hook up in the, uh, during the break. I swear the head came out and said, and we, everybody was like, damn, in between. Y'all was getting bit. Because then you were kind of, now this is kind of, but I wonder did. Was he around? Was he him? around or was one of these people involved even in that show for them to, even as That's teenager him. kids, be willing to say, yo, was That's looking up question. and stuff? I never really, like, even with everything that came out, I never, like, looked into, like, who, who was, was over it. All the ones that we, like, grew up watching. So you got like Zoe 101. That's the classifier. You got, uh, what's the one uh, everybody like? Because Amanda show, you automatically assume mm-hmm. they had a lot of dealings with that. Ken, Nikhil, uh Those was more of that late 90s, early 2000s show. Yeah. Like, the real 90s shows, like, uh... Marissa explains it all. I, yeah. I, I doubt he was would have been uh, involved with those, but it was because he started developing later. I'm trying to remember all these Nickelodeon shows. Uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm better with that than you are. I'm looking at you. You like. You I know, remember that. You like, like you know, you would know it before. I'm saying I, I would be able to say it before you, and yeah. you'd be like, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> that's how it typically be. I'd be like, see, you remember this? You'd be like, oh yeah. And I was I'm random like that, but I. But he was in Good Burger, and I wonder why he wasn't in Good Burger too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was the he was the uh, the manager. The manager. Because mm-hmm. when Good Burger two came out, I was like, I wonder if the manager gonna be there. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's not he's not involved at all. Oh, and uh, what's the one that she was the heavier set girl, but she was always doing everything. I know you're talking about the one that was in uh on the Steve show. I was what you talking about. What's, your, what's Steve's show? What's her name? I know you're talking about. Let me see. Gloria Gunberg. What, what is her name? You ain't gonna get it that way. You uh, the first one. Some got the impression that Schneider favored white performers, with black cast members getting sidelined. Dan had a nicer relationship with some of the other white kids, I didn't feel close to him at, at all. Contributing to Jeanette mm-hmm. McCurdy's trauma. I, I, tried, I was like, is, is How about Lori? Lori Denberg. I said yeah. Denberg. Because uh, yeah. she used to uh, do the little report. Yeah, yeah, Lori. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. she ended up phasing out. So I'm like, did you also have an issue with... Because <laughs> uh, they did say he had an image thing. Even though he's a yeah, bigger they, guy, yeah, yeah. but he they, he, they he said that. he had an image issue. So did she get pushed because off too? Of, yeah, but she was good though. Yeah. I didn't feel close to him at at all. Contributing to Jeanette McCurdy's trauma, Jeanette McCurdy wasn't the first person to speak out against Schneider, but she has been among the most vocal with the publication of her memoir. I'm glad my mom died. I have said everything that I want to say about that in the book. I hope people, you know what? I hope that anybody whose attention might be piqued by these headlines will, will, will consider reading the book because I've said everything in as articulate and thoughtful of a way as I can manage. As you can tell from that title, Schneider wasn't the only one who made McCurdy's upbringing so traumatic. The Sam Puckett actress nonetheless felt victimized by Schneider, AKA the creator. But she can't say, I didn't like that, or she can't, not have a sense of humor about it, and she can't not play with it because she has to. You have to be nice because that's the only way that you're gonna get through. In addition to being one of the women asked to give the creator massages, McCurdy recalls being coerced by him to drink alcohol while underage. Although some called McCurdy the creator's new favorite, she found him, quote, mean-spirited, controlling, and terrifying. McCurdy claims she was offered $300,000 not to discuss her Nickelodeon experiences, quote, specifically related to the creator. Needless to say, she rejected the hush money. Not doing it, not taking it. And then I do remember leaning against, I think I talk about this in the book, but I lean against my bed and I'm like, well, shoot, that could have put my nieces through college. Like, that was some good money. But I am ultimately proud of, of my decision there. Sexualizing underage actors. Honestly, a lot of the show's 90s and 2000s kids grew up on snuck-in innuendos. 
Some moments from Schneider shows have aged worse than others, however. The main point of concern stems from the wardrobe department, putting young actresses in short skirts and revealing outfits. We don't need to be hyper-conservative of bodies, but that didn't represent even me as a girl at that age. Via reps, Schneider true. denied sexualizing young stars, arguing that other adults were on set and the network approved everything. Beyond what viewers saw on screen, though, several stars felt exposed behind the scenes. But he would regularly pick the skirts, and they were so short that I was required to, to wear, wear biker shorts just in case. But Something. the biker shorts were too long, so they had to cut them. Oh my gosh. Jeanette McCurdy remembers Schneider. Hey, you would think. Wow. Never mind. Because I often say, you would think, who would know more about what kids like besides other the, the kids actually on the show? But that wasn't their mindset. Yeah, They no. were trying to push a narrative. They knew what the hell they were doing. Yeah, most definitely taking a photo of her in a bikini, while Alexa Nicholas says he regularly sat in on costume fittings, despite not being required to be there. Although a curtain was drawn, knowing that Schneider was on the other side made for an uneasy experience. And I would come out, I would do a spin, and then he would look at the wardrobe artist and say, can I have the Polaroids? Underpaying and undermining female writers. Given its leading... So what, he has to have like some shit he probably didn't got rid of it. But yeah. typically, fetish people, they don't get rid they of it. They, they just rehide it. Yeah. it. Because for you to want all this stuff and for you to even have this mindset back then, you still, it's somewhere. You still have it somewhere. Yeah. It's, Hoping that they don't find it. If they ever come searching. <sighs> because typically, that's how all of them, they get to, when they come searching, they end up finding all of it. And they be like, I'm be like, and we always be like, why the fuck you can get rid of that shit? Like, even like with, with R. Kelly with the tapes, you be like, bro, you still have some of the tapes? Like, why? You still? Like, why? You, you should have learned from the first situation. Yeah, it's, that's weird, bro. Have the Polaroids. Underpaying and undermining female writers. Given its leading lady, one would expect the Amanda Show's writing staff to be ample with female voices. When True. the show premiered, Jenny Kilgan and Christy Stratton were the only women in the writer's room. Both felt belittled by Schneider, who allegedly said, quote, women can't write funny. She challenged us to name a funny female writer. And he said this to the writers in the writer's room. What's worse, Kilgan and Stratton were required to split their salary while male writers were paid in full. Schneider claims that he wasn't responsible for finances and splitting salaries wasn't uncommon for new writers. Kilgan argued this was against union rules, however, it taking is. it up with the WGA. Can, can there be teams on this show? And they said, no. Jenny told me this and I was going like, wow, they were trying to pull a fast one. When Schneider found out, he allegedly threatened to get Kilgan blacklisted over the phone. While Stratton was supposedly fired, Kilgan quit and pursued legal action, settling for an unknown amount. But it had a lasting impact on my career. I mean, I knew that. I knew that this was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. Like, it had better stop. And to learn that it didn't stop, that it was all for nothing. Temper tantrums and crude comments. In the wake of Schneider's exit from Nickelodeon, various co-writers came forward, saying he was, quote, prone to tantrums and angry emails. Dan would come down and yell and scream. There was many times where I had to go, okay, you're creating an atmosphere on this set that is not healthy. Jenny Kilgan remembers Schneider messaging her to scream degrading comments like, quote, I'm an idiot. As inconsiderate as Schneider could be on set, he was apparently at his worst in the writer's room, where he forced women into humiliating situations and regularly made vulgar jabs at their expense. And he would always present it like a joke, you know, and he would be laughing while he said it. Um, but you always felt like, disagreeing with Dan or saying, or standing up for yourself could result in you getting fired. Jeanette McC You know, another thing that's kind of so... like weird about the whole situation yeah. is the fact that of the adult actors that saw a lot of stuff and then kind of swept it on the road too. Mm. Like, even though, because all these kids was like, hey, all this stuff was going on on set, but it wasn't just 100% shows that just 100% were kids. Mm -hmm. You had adults on these shows as well. Mm -hmm. So the adults that were involved in these shows, 
didn't speak up for these kids and said, hey, that might be distasteful. Hey, that might be uh, taken a certain way. All they did was came and acted went home. It seems to, you know what I'm saying? All these kids had to endure this. If it wasn't uh, psychological, it was yeah. sexual things. You know what I'm saying? Which so, is still. But none of the, none of the adults that were actors on these shows ever looked as though during that time spoke up for these kids. Why are they dressing like this? They don't have to dress like this. Or hey, have we tried this different approach? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it sounds like to me just like hearing them talk now like just for instance like here well all these people were typically i'm talking about the actual act. i know who you're talking about but i'm saying just hearing her talk for instance she's a writer but just hearing her talk because she's still around she's still yeah. on set like she still sees the things that's going on and to me it sounds like it's like everyone was living in this type of fear because they didn't want to jeopardize their careers because he had so much power and for a lot of people, that's what it'd be. It'd be, it'd be fear of speaking up because I don't want to ruin what I got going on. I don't want to mess up my money or my career. Or like she just said, like, I feel like if I like doing, like speaking up or leaving or whatever, then not times out of 10, I know my career is over. Yeah. So for a lot of people, it'd, it'd be fear. Pretty said of Schneider in an interview, quote, it was so commonplace, his behavior, and it was so accepted because everyone was scared of losing their job. Schneider has described some of his past comments as, quote, snarky. Based on the effect his words had on numerous former colleagues, snarky hardly sums it up. Thinking about it now, yeah, it's like, oh boy, I, I just think of that poor girl and what she had to, you know, go through. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Predators on sets. Two predators worked on Dan Schneider's shows, production assistant Jason Handy and dialogue coach Brian Peck. Schneider claims that he wasn't the one who hired Peck. To be fair, Drake Bell credited Schneider for reaching out upon learning about Peck. And Dan just goes, you don't need to talk anymore about it. That's all I needed to hear. Are you okay? You know, do you need anything from me? Is there anything that you need? The fact that Schneider was among the few Nickelodeon execs who called Bell shows that there was a much larger problem with the network and industry as a whole. That doesn't mean Schneider wasn't part of the issue. When you look at having multiple child predators who worked at Nickelodeon, it raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. His shows gained a reputation for hostile working conditions where people were afraid to speak their minds. Even if Schneider wasn't directly responsible for Handy and Peck's actions, he still contributed to an unsafe environment where predators could get away with heinous acts for so long. Dan's presence in the room could change the vibe of the room. Everybody would kind of just be like, okay, shut up. Has your opinion on Dan Schneider changed? Let us know in the comments. In my opinion, Dan Schneider is a creep. Full blown, my opinion, creep. This is all, all the way around sad, man. Facts. Y'all spend most up in the comments, man. Let us know y'all thoughts about it in the comments section about it down below. But as always, y'all know how I go, man. I do go with the name DJ Look at this. Is. We are. We are. Had to go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partner.